Welcome to Facebook. I'm Dr. Mary Neal. Brother Joseph, Pastor Joseph.
change your mind. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill, Yeshua the Messiah, to all mankind. Hallelujah. Father, I come before you in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And oh God, I thank you for this new day. God, I thank you for new mercy and new grace. God, I thank you for passing over us, allowing us to see a new day. God, I thank you for all your goodness that you bestow upon us. God, I thank you for loving the world so much that you gave us your best gift. For you so love all mankind that you sent Yeshua Jesus into this world that we will have life and we will have it more abundantly. God, thank you that I do not just want life, but I want abundance of life. I want life for eternity. And God, I thank you for giving us choices, oh God, to choose life or death, blessings or curses. God, I bless you, oh God, for all that you have done. I thank you for sitting up high, looking down low, searching our hearts. For you know the hearts of every man you Know what we can do. You know what we cannot do. But those of us who are Yeshua the Messiah. 
The word says we can do all things through Yahshua who give us the strength. God, I thank you for his strength in the name of Yahshua. God, I ask you to move by your spirit today and have your own way. Let the Rosh Harkosh Holy Ghost take over me for I know not how to teach. But you said just open my mouth and you would fill it. God, fill my mouth today. God, I pray, oh God, that you unharden hearts today. That you anoint our eyes with eye salve, that we can see clearly your anoint our ears, oh God, sharpen our ears, oh God, that we can hear clearly. God, give us a heart of flesh that we can receive your word because that is the key, not just hearing and believing, but receiving and obeying. God, help us to obey your word because your word says, so if we obey your commandment, you'll give us a new heart and cause us to obey your commandment that we will walk out in truth, oh God. Lord, help us, oh God, to walk in truth where your word says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking out the truth. God, let us walk it out today in the name of Yahshua. God, I bless your name. If anyone is sick among us, oh God, I pray that you will heal them in the name of Yeshua. For Yeshua went about healing all that was sick and all that was oppressed by the adversary because she was with him. God, thank you that you give us that same commandment that we can lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. In the name of Yahshua, but knowing also that it's the person faith, oh God, in the name of Yahshua, let us have faith to hear your word today. I bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining me once again. Blessing in the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. First of all, in case we have anybody out there or anyone that would come later that's not in the family of God. There's one way we could be justified according to the word of God. And you find that in Romans chapter 4 and Romans chapter number 5. If we believe on God and believe that God raised Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, we are justified by our faith. Then the Bible tells us we are to learn of him. We are to confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts. That God the Father raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, and thou shalt be saved, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. And it says, for out of our hearts, we are to continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is to be made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13 are for those of us who are in Yeshua, Jesus Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, he that continue to believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, agree with God that sin is sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, the, when you go to Proverbs 28 and 13, it says, he that confesses, he that continue to confess his sin and forsake, meaning repent from his sin, shall have mercy. But he that confesses not his sin will not prosper. So the Bible give us steps that we need to follow. You can't expect to be forgiven for your sin if you never own up to your sin. We need to be like David. I acknowledge my transgression. And when we acknowledge it and repent, that's when the blood of Yahshua continue to cleanse us from our sin. We must acknowledge and we must repent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are continuing with our study from last uh, Monday night. Uh, the title, this is my portion, Promise, Promises, All God's Word. We have heard that so many times. All God promises, or yea, and amen. But sometimes when we think of all God promises, a yes, and amen, we think all the blessings are yea, 
and amen. But also all the curses are yea and amen. So promises, are you under God's blessings or curse? Your choice. Promises, a blessing, or both, should I say. Now, I'm just highlighting what we're going to go through. The first one, I probably won't mention it again, but these are some of the things we'll cover as we go forward. Promises of both the blessings and the curse. Choose the blessing, my choice. The blessing, if, anytime we see the word if, it means exactly what it said, if. That's why we need to look at if and but. If we don't look at if and but, we can miss it. It said, the blessing, if you listen, obey, to my commandment, the commandments of Adonai, that's God, the Father, your God, and the curse. If you don't listen to obey the commandment, uh, you did not keep my ways, but were partial in applying the Torah, the law. Now, what's so amazing, I'm not sure if I'll get back there today, but I'm going to expound on this one. Because what's so amazing, I post this out there um, thinking it was Thursday night about being partial. Like so many of us are partial when it comes to God's tenth commandment. When we do that, we are out of the will of God. So many of us are partial when it come about to come when it comes to two things that we disagree, we are partial. But when you go to James chapter two, and I'm not sure if I'll get there today again, the same one that said one said, Oh. And so many times we would choose out of those 10th commandment what we're against, but we won't choose all 10. I myself, I do not choose one, two, or three. I choose all 10. So if anybody follow me, they would know I teach all 10. I'm for what God is for, and I am against what God is against. God give us choices. I also give people choices because he told me to be an example, not to be Lord over God's heritage. So this is my stand to stand with God, but not make force because that's not my job. I am to teach people what thus says the Lord and be an example. Some of us do not teach it. And we are definite, not good example. He says again, you did not keep my ways, but were partial in applying the Torah, the law. And we'll get there today or tomorrow night, and I will share the scripture. These are just highlight. If crooked again, make it straight. If wrong, make it right. You have wearied out on now with your words by saying that anyone who does wrong is good from Adonai's perspective and that he is delighted with them. The devil is a lie. Two witnesses, heaven and earth. We went through this last uh, Monday where everything is established from uh, uh, everything is established by two or more witnesses and I took people all the way back as what we call the Old Testament all the way through to Revelation everything is established by two or more witnesses and that's why Yeshua said there were three witnesses John was a witness his work was a witness, but God was a great, the greatest witness. Then we went through the scripture where Yahshua said, I'm one that bear witness of myself and my father bear witness of me. That's two witnesses. So everything is established by two or more witnesses. The purpose of your life. I don't know your God will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your children. So as we go into this study, our focus chapter 
It's Deuteronomy chapter uh, chapter number 30, but I am going to use other translation to go along with Deuteronomy chapter 30. I am reading from the complete Jewish Bible in case it sounds a little different. When the time arrives that all these things has come upon you, both, both always mean to someone or some place or something. So again, when the time arrives that all these things have come upon you, both, that's two, the blessings and the curse, which I have presented to you. And you are there among the nation to which Adonai your God has driven you. Then at last, you will start thinking about what has happened to you. The problem is many things happen to us, but sometimes we never think about why these things are happening to us. Sometimes things are happening to us because we're out of the will of God. Sometimes things are happening to us because we're just being tried to see if we're going to continue or not. Sometimes things just happen because we're not looking or watching what we're doing. A good example on yesterday. Well, let me go back a little. When I moved here to Georgia, it was because I was living in one place in Texas. My daughter was in another place. And I had been praying. My daughter had asked me if I would move to Georgia. And I said, I don't know. I need to pray about it. So I was in my kitchen. I had a big table in the midst of the kitchen on stone floors. And all of a sudden, I slipped. If the table wasn't there, I probably would have hurt myself. And so when I called my daughter, I said, honey, you will do not believe what happened to me. I slipped on the floor. And before I could get it out of my mouth, I had said the same thing. She says, mom, what would have happened if I was in Georgia and you was here by yourself and hurt yourself? Well, that wasn't the first time I fell, but praise God, I didn't hurt myself. I was out in the park. We was running and all of a sudden, I just slid right down on the walkway, and boy, was I sore. But praise God, nothing was broken. What it actually did fix something that I had uh, hurt many years ago, because one time I was in Waco, I was getting out of my bed, my foot caught in the middle of the sheet, and down on the floor I went, and I would have to limp when I would get up, I would have to stand sometime when I would get up because it was really, really sore. But after that fall in the park, I never had that problem again. So sometimes things can happen and God can get glory out of what would happen. On yesterday, uh, we had someone at the gate. So I don't know why I brought the remote up here. And so I was running downstairs to open the gate and I had my phone in my hand. And so I went to press the remote and I think I missed two steps. And down on that hard floor, I went sliding, knocked chairs over, dishes over. And when I fell, I fell on my stomach and I caught myself on my elbow. And my knee, yesterday my knee was hurting a little. I have a scar on on my, uh, right here on the back of my arm by my elbow. And so I said, oh boy, I'm going to be so sore tomorrow. And then I said, the devil is a lie. I will not be sore. Yesterday, my sister and I, we went out shopping. We went out to dinner. Only thing I felt was the little where it kind of broke the skin on my elbow. And so yesterday I'm here and what I'm going to bring before you today is mostly what I did last night. I had worked on Deuteronomy, but the Lord kept giving me more information. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I wasn't sure. And I kept going back and forth. When I don't know, I just keep reading different things. And, and I wait until I hear from the Lord what he wants me to teach. 
So he brought this scripture back to me, Deuteronomy chapter number 30. And so anyway, so yesterday I came home. I wasn't sore at all. I sat here at my desk for a long time. I think until it was about almost one o'clock because I started very late. Last night when I got in bed, my arm got really sore. My side was sore. I started turning. I couldn't sleep that well. I went doze off, wake up all through the night. But praise God, nothing was broken. Nothing was sprung. And I said, God, I just thank you because the way I fell on that hard floor, I could have broke my arm. I could have broke my leg. And when I fell on my stomach, like everything inside of me just started moving and shaking. Maybe I shook off some fat. That would be good, praise God. But I'm telling you, it doesn't mean nothing would happen to us. But God protect us even when things happen. It's like many times things are happening all around or someone is passing. Someone is getting really sick. Someone this, someone that. And I always hear my spirit. But it will not come nigh thee. I'm a person like this. I believe every word. I do not choose what I want to believe. I do not choose what I want to receive. I do not choose when someone say something to make me feel good, to deceive me or whatever. I take God's word as it is. And that's the way we are to be. Take it as it is. Because it's not that hard to understand. Only if we do not want to line up with God's word. That's what make it hard to understand. Even a baby, can you read something to them, they can understand God's word. But when we get so indoctrinated by different things, we want to receive what somebody else said. And we go away from what is actually written down in scripture. That's where your proof is going to be. What's written down in the word of God. And that's why Paul says what I have delivered unto you. You are to stand on that. Do not go to and fro by every wind of doctrine where men lay in wait to deceive us. But stand on what is written down in scripture. And if you do that, you will never be ashamed. What makes people ashamed when someone corrects them and they are teaching and preaching something that's not according to God's word? If I'm wrong and you love me, please, please, I beg of you, show me where I'm wrong. I tell people I have no problem with people confronting me. Just make sure if you confront me, you're using the word of God to do so and not from a bad translation. Hallelujah. So now back in Deuteronomy chapter 30. I didn't even know I was going to share that. Hallelujah. When the time arrives that all these things have come upon you, both the blessing and the curse, which I have presented to you. And you are there among the nations to which Adonai your God has driven you. Then at last you will start thinking about what has happened to you. You know, going back, when things happen to me, I want to know why. God, did I do something to cause this? Because remember, he chastened those whom he loved. If he does not chasten you, you are bastard. He is not concerned about you. So if he loves you, he's going to chasten those whom he loved. Now, someone would say God loved the whole world. Absolutely. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever continue to believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But also we need to continue to study the word of God. The Bible says, I love those who love me. I hate those who hate me. The, God, the Lord loved Jacob, but he hated Esau. So do not tell me the Lord will not hate some of us. Hallelujah. We Sometimes we read one thing and we like it. That's it. Nothing going to change. When God so loved the world, it didn't say for God so loved the Christian. God loves everybody. But God gave everyone freedom of choice to choose. Hallelujah. The blessing. If you listen, that means obey. Don't just listen. Obey. Some translation would say listen. Some going to say obey. 
Number one, you can listen and never obey. The blessing, if you listen, obey to the commandment of Adonai your God and the curse. If you don't listen to obey the commandment, those are where you're going to find the information as we go forward. In 2 Peter 2.14, 2 Peter 2.14. For they have eyes always on the lookout for a woman who will commit adultery. Well, you know, this has to do with men. A men and men's always looking for women to cheat on their wives. And today, it vice versa. The women are looking for men to cheat on their husband. So in 2 Peter 2.14, it's dealing with the men looking for women to cheat on their wives. So again, that's Second Peter 2.14, Complete Jewish Bible. But they have eyes always on the lookout for a woman who will commit adultery. Eyes that never stop sinning. Remember, if your eyes offend you, plug it out. And they have a heart that has exercised itself in greed. Some people are always greedy for gain, for more, even preachers. So that they seduce unstable people. What a curse brought. What a curse. See, many people, if you go to, say, Deuteronomy and you see how we can be on a curse, someone going to say that it's the Old Testament, but we do not study. Yeshua never said this. This is the New Testament in my word. He said the New Testament in my blood had nothing to do with the changes in God's 10th commandment. Deuteronomy 11, 26, 28. Complete Jewish Bible. See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you listen, obey to the commandment of Adonai, your God, that I am giving you today. And the curse, if you don't listen, obey to the commandments of Adonai God, your Adonai God, your God, but turn aside from the way I am ordering you today and follow other gods that you have not known. Really, sometimes we do not understand. That's why the Bible tells us there are gods many, whether in heaven, or oh, there are so-called God many, whether in heaven or in earth, but there is one true God. Some people do not realize they are making things and men their God. Anytime I go against the word of God and I choose the word of man, when it does not line up with the word of God, man has become my God. Remember Moses was made a God. So there are many gods in the Bible. But there is one true God, which is the Heavenly Father, the Father of Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 1, 8 and 9, complete Jewish Bible. But even if we are, for that matter, an angel from heaven were to announce to you some so-called good news, contrary to the good news we did announce to you, let him be under a curse forever. Some people, I don't know if they have really studied this. Other words, it's saying, if some person, but if we, even them, or for, which is disciples, or for that matter, any angel from heaven, were to announce to you some so-called good news gospel, contrary to the good news we did announce to you. Let him be under a curse forever. People do not realize when they go against what God said, they bring themselves under the curse instead of the blessing. Number nine, same chapter, Galatians 1, 8 and 9. Verse 9. We said it before, and I say it again, if anyone 
announces good news contrary to what you received, let him be under a curse forever. See, the curses, it was not just in the book of Deuteronomy. They also, it's right here in these chapters as well. Showing us how we can be in God, under the blessings, and then we can turn around and we no longer under the blessing, but we are under a curse, our choice. Galatians 3.10. Galatians 3.10. This one is coming from King James Version. I'm going to read AMP and Complete Jewish Bible, all three translation. They, are, they mean the same, just read a little different. This one is, again, Galatians 3.10, King James Version. For as many as are of the works of the law, notice people miss works. That had to do with circumcision, wave offerings, and all of that other stuff. Works, not engraved. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Because you can't work yourself to be justified by uh, circumcision, wave offering, sins offering, and all those offering, you're justified by your faith. That's why I go through it every time I come on. How we're justified has nothing to do with what you have done. Once you are in Yeshua the Messiah, this is when you work out your own deliverance, meaning salvation. So again, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. You can't work yourself to be justified. You are justified only by your faith. If you believe on God and believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead. If we stop believing that, we fall back under the curse. Again, I'm reading the whole verse. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is everyone. Now watch that. Curse is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Well, remember, God's commandment is written in the book to do them. But they was never, I mean, you would never find in the 10th commandment do works to be justified. You would never find in the commandment uh, if someone hates you, uh, do this. All of that stuff. Tenth commandment is what God wrote with his fingers. And they was not to put them in stone. They were supposed to write them in like paper. Because God did not want to change in his commandment. That's why his commandment does not change from numbers all the way through to the book of Revelation. So now I'm reading the same verse from AMP. For all who depend on the law seeking justification. See, that's what it's speaking of, how one is justified. For all who depend on the law seeking justification and salvation by obedience to the law and the observant of riddles are under a curse. For it is written, curse, command to destruction. Is everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law so as to practice them? Well, that goes right back to James chapter 2. The one that said one said all ten. So we can't choose which one or should not try to choose which one we think we should obey and other people should obey. We are to obey all ten. And many people say what they can't do. Well, nobody can obey the Ten Commandment, but I can do all things through the Messiah who give us the strength. So that's what you call a double tongue. Yes, we can. And we break them. We just confess, agree with God. He's right. We are wrong. Repent. And the blood of Yahshua will cleanse us if we are in Yahshua the Messiah. But it can't cleanse us if we are not in him. Hallelujah. Complete Jewish Bible. Same verse and chapter. For everyone who depends on legalistic observance. See, that's what it had to do with. Of Torah, the law commands, lives under a curse. Since it is written, curse is everyone who does not keep on doing everything written in the scroll of the Torah 
the law. So it's saying if we do not continue to keep God's commandment, what God wrote with his fingers, we are under a curse. 1 Corinthians 9, 21. I do not teach this way to hurt anybody. I teach this way because God commands me to teach this way. I do not want to see people just get in the Messiah and end up in hell. I want to see people and myself, number one, not only go to heaven, stand at the judgment seat of Messiah because ungodly people will not stand in the judgment. I want us to enter into those gates. I do not want Yeshua to, to, to judge me and say, depart from me. I never knew you who works iniquity. You prophesied in my name. You did this in my name, but you were still lawless. Depart from me. No, I do not want that. I want everyone to live, be a follower of Yahshua, because my sheep hear my voice and they do follow me. I want everyone to enter into those gates, go to heaven, and live forever. Hell is made for Satan and his angels. But I am whom I choose to obey. I am whom I choose to follow. That's why the Bible said, if we submit ourselves to God, we belong to God. But if we submit ourselves to Satan, Satan is our God, we belong to him. Who do you choose to obey? Do you want the blessings or do you want the curse? My choice and your choice as well. Hallelujah. First Corinthians again. Oh, I don't think I read that. First Corinthians 9, 21. Complete Jewish Bible. With those who live outside the framework of Torah, meaning the law, I put myself in the position of someone outside the Torah, the law, in order to win those outside the Torah, the law. Although, I myself, watch this, I myself am not outside the framework of God's Torah, law, but within the framework of Torah, the law, as upheld by the Messiah. Other words, remember what Paul said? I was without the law once, but when then the commandment came, other words, we are without the law because of that first Adam. We was born ungodly. Sin was put up on us. But once we are in Yeshua, by our faith, sin is no longer credit put up on us. Sin is something that we do. And once we do, that's why we have 1 John 1 and 9, Proverbs 28, 13. If we, if. If it's up to me, up to you. If we confess our sin, if we agree with God that sin is sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from what? All, oh, not some, all unrighteousness. King James Version, same chapter and verse, 1 Corinthians 9, 21. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. Romans 7, study this chapter. I don't want to go through the whole thing, but it's very powerful if we have not studied Romans 7, 9, 25. So I probably would just highlight some verses. I'll see what the Lord says. If you tell me to go through the whole thing, I will. I was once alive outside the framework of Torah, but when the commandment really encountered me, sin sprung to life. That's why we had the commandments to show us what sin is. And I died. In other words, he died to what? Sin. The commandment that was intended to bring me life was found to be bringing me death. Because the commandment revealed to us 
what sin is. And so we are to have God's commandment because God's commandment is holy. That's why he says, circumcise therefore the fourth skin of your heart. Because circumcision could only be done on man and it did not change their heart. But circumcision of the heart is what changes us. That's why he says, I'll put my laws in your mind and I will write them in your heart. So that's verse 12 in Romans chapter 7. So the Torah law is holy. That is, the commandment is holy, just and good. And you wonder, when people say nobody need to keep the commandment, nobody can keep the commandment, I wonder, what are you reading? As my sister and I was talking yesterday about you have people, they say uh, the Jesus book from Matthew to Revelation. You don't need to read the Old Testament. But we know, and I hope everyone listening to the, today know, Yahshua came in the volume of the book. From Genesis to the book of Revelation. And they said there are other books that's not even recorded there. And so we know you cannot understand God's word if you're not reading the old and what you call the new. Because as I said to my sister last night, do you realize man put that paper there that said New Testament King James Version. God did not put that paper there. Man put it there. And the Lord told me many years ago, take it out. Because you can't separate me from my word because I came in the volume of the book. From Genesis to the book of Revelation. That's why I said, let us make man in our own image. So many times we feel like, well, we don't need to read the old. And that's why we're still in darkness. We don't need to read the old. That's why we can't see Yahshua the Messiah as the son of God from Genesis chapter number three. When people say you don't need to read the old, well, you will never understand the new. Because the same thing he said in the old, he said in what we think is the new. So we need to read from Genesis, not read, but study. Those of us who are teaching the word of God, especially from Genesis to the book of Revelation, where it almost summarized the Bible. Hallelujah. That was the Holy Ghost. So the Torah law is holy. Remember, be holy. It's what? It's holy. Remember, if you read Psalm chapter number, I'm thinking 19, it says the commandments of God is holy. How do we think we're going to be holy when we're not obeying and feel like we can't obey his commandment? That's what makes us holy. It is a heart thing. Hallelujah. Mind can say one thing, but what is your heart saying? So the Torah is holy. That is, the commandments is holy. Just and good. They are just and they are good. Remember Psalm 19, 119, one of the longest, uh, longest book in the Bible is Psalm 119, or should I say 119, the longest chapter. Actually, the Lord told me to go through it again. I actually taught it years ago because if anybody say they can't, they don't need to keep God's commandment, you'll see that is a proud person. We are to keep his commandment. That's what makes us holy. That's how we know if we really love all mankind because the Bible said love works no ill toward his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. That's in Roman chapter number 13, uh, verse 13, same chapter. Then did something good. Remember, the commandment is what? They are holy and they are good. They are just. They're holy. They're just and good. So verse 13 says, Then did something good become for me the source of death? Heaven forbid. Rather, it was sin working death in me through something good. So that sin may be clearly 
exposed as sin. I remember uh, King James said that sin may be exceedingly sinful. So that's what the commandment does reveal to us what sin is. So let me finish the whole verse. It was sin working death in me through something good so that sin might be clearly exposed as sin. So that sin through the commandment might come to be experienced as sinful beyond measure. Verse 14. For we know, everyone doesn't know this. They knew this. For we know that the Torah, the commandment law, is of the spirit. Don't miss that. For we know that the Torah, the law, is of the spirit. Remember what Yeshua said. My words, they are spirit and they are life. So God's commandment is of the spirit. That's why we are to walk in the spirit, be led by the spirit, talk in the spirit, pray in the spirit. It has nothing to do with what we call, what men say, a heavenly language. Hallelujah. For we know that the Torah is of the Spirit. But as for me, I am bound to the old nature, sold to sin as a slave. Because sin slaves us. That's what it does. It keeps us in bondage. We're not free. 15. Listen to what he said. I don't understand my own behavior. You know, sometimes we say, I don't know why I did that. Sin. I don't know why I said that. Sin. I don't know why I hate them. Sin. So he said, I don't understand my own behavior. I don't do what I want to do. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. And many times I have heard people preach that, but they stop on that verse and they miss a revelation. They did not continue to read. Listen what he said. Verse 16, now if I am doing what I don't want to do, I am agreeing that the Torah law is good. But now it is no longer the real me doing it, but the sin house inside me. For I know that there is nothing good housed inside me. When sin is in, in there, Nothing good. That is, inside my what? Old nature. See, he, he's speaking of the old nature. He's not speaking of the new nature. He's speaking that old man had sin dwelling in him, and that was nothing good in him. But if we do not continue to read, we will miss it. Again, but now it no longer the real me doing it, but the sin house inside me. For I know that there is nothing good housed inside me. That is inside my old nature. See, he's not talking about the new nature. I can want what is good, but I can't do it. In other words, if a person is not in Yahshua, many times they want to do what's right, but it's very hard because they're led by the devil. They're not led by the Spirit of God. Verse 19. For I don't do the good I want. Instead, the evil that I don't want is what I do, old nature. But if I am doing what the real me doesn't want, it is no longer the real me doing it, but the sin house inside me. So I find it to be the rule, a kind of perverse Torah, that although I want to do what is good, evil is right there with me, because Satan go to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. For in my inner self, don't miss this. For in my inner self, I completely agree with God's Torah. Notice that. In my inner self, now he's not talking about the old nature, but he's talking about the new man. He's talking about what he agreed with. The problem we 
uh, many times we can't stop sinning because we will not agree with the word of God. We agree with a lying spirit, what we can't do, what we don't need to do. All our sin, past, present, and future are forgiven us, which is a lie from the pits of hell. You do the crime, you do the time. The Bible says all your past sin, you have forgotten that you was purged from your old sin. No, not sin that's in me. I need to confess and repent before the blood of Yeshua can cleanse me. Hallelujah. 21, again. So I find it to be the rule, a kind of perverse Torah law, that although I want to do what is good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner self, I completely agree with God's Torah. But in my various parts, I see a different Torah, sin. One that battle with the Torah in my mind. And make me a prison of sin, Torah, which is operating in my various parts. That's why if these parts offend us, your eyes, plug them out, your hand, cut them off, your feet, cut them off. It's better to go to heaven with one than to go to heaven with two, according to Yahshua. Verse 24, same chapter. What a miserable creature I am. Who will rescue me from this body bound for death? In other words, you keep sinning. That that's where we are in now. Then he says in 25, Thanks be to God. He will. How are you going to do it? Through Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Now he's going to sum it up. To sum it up, watch this. With my mind, I'm a slave of God's Torah. But with my old nature, I am a slave of sin Torah. So what is he saying? He made up in his mind that he was going to be a slave to God's law. Because there's another law which called sin. So that's why he said to sum it up with my mind, I'm a slave of God Torah, but with my old nature, I am a slave of sin Torah. Now, if you notice, if you were with me earlier, I wasn't sure if God wanted me to go through that chapter. So I just post the whole chapter there like, Lord, if you want me to go through it, I will. If not, I'll continue with the other teaching in Deuteronomy. So I like to be led by the Spirit because maybe someone hadn't heard it that way. Maybe someone was deceived. Maybe someone been listening for years to a lying spirit that I don't need to obey God's commandment. That's the Old Testament. Nobody can obey them. And they miss where Yeshua Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandment. They miss Romans 13. Oh, no one, but one thing, and that is to love one another. For this thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, honor thy father and thy mother. If it be any other commandment, it is comprehended in this saying, namely, love works no ill toward his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. They miss James chapter 2. He that said one, said all ten. So, which means, people got, we wonder, why wow, we have so many things going on in the world. We wonder why so many young people are doing all this evil, killing people at the blink of an eye. We wonder why old people are doing the same thing. We wonder why there is so much hatred and, 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 and malice and strife and envy and jealousy and racism, even in what we call our churches, which is not our churches. They're supposed to be God's churches in the first place. We wonder why. Because... We are not teaching what God commands us to teach. I never hear anyone teach if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. And eternal life is not in abiding in you. That means you're going to hell. He never said it wasn't there, but because of the hatred, if Yeshua come back, we're going to hell. People do not even want to teach about hell, knowing Yahshua Jesus taught about hell more than anyone in Scripture. Why? Because he wants us to know both the blessing and the curse. 
He want us to know he's the blessing and Satan is the curse. He want us to know if we follow him, we will be blessed. He want us to know if we follow Satan, we are under a curse. So our choice, let's choose the blessing because both of those are promises. Promises of blessing, the blessing and the curse. Choose the blessing. The blessing, if you listen, obey to the commandments of God. And the curses, if you don't listen to obey God's 10 commandment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm not a hard teacher. I just love the truth. Because Yeshua says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children is walking in the truth. Because it is the truth that what? Make us free from lies and deception and wallowing in sin. That's why when we sin, let's agree with God that sin is sin. Not make excuses for it that I can't help myself. God knows uh, I'm trying when I'm lying. That's why God searches the heart. God knows everything. There's no way I'm going to come here and pretend that I believe uh, I'm not to keep God's commandment and I'm teaching other people to keep them. The devil is a lie. No, because he that stand at the altar must be partakers of the altar. Other words, I can't give what I do not have. I can't show what I cannot see and I should not even try. So let's get back into the word of God, steady, show ourselves approved, workmen that need us not to be ashamed, rightly, dividing the word of truth. Thank you all so much for joining me. I pray the word of God was a blessing to you. Once again, if we have anybody out there that has not been justified by their faith in many times, I don't hear justification. We just go to save. Are you saved? Saved from what? I mean, I can be saved out of Egypt and to the family of God by believing Jesus is the son of God. But what about all the garbage in my life? Am I saved from that? Am I saved for not obeying God's commandment? Am I saved from hatred, lying, stealing, and all that stuff? Save me to be delivered. So the Bible teaches us the first step is to be justification. That's why Paul said, I delivered unto you, first of all, how the Messiah, Christ, died for our sin, and he was buried and raised on the third day according to the scripture. And so Paul teaches what he did not believe at one time, but once he received it, he went straight in the sinning card, delivering unto people what he also received. Christ died, he was raised on the third day, according to the scripture. And he said, if they did not, and we do not continue in that, he said, you're running a race in vain. Vain means useless. I'm running away. I mean, I'm running a race, but I'm not running for Christ, Yeshua. I'm running for the devil because I have went away from what was first delivered unto me, according to 1 Corinthians 15. But when you go to Romans number 4 and 5, this teaches us how we just we are justified by our faith. The same way our father Abraham was justified by his faith, we are justified the same way. When we believe on God, and we believe that God raised his son, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead. That's what makes us right with God because sin was imputed, credit to us before we sin. When we believe on Yahshua, who is the second Adam from heaven, when we believe on him, this is when righteousness is credit to us. You don't work for it. You just need faith to believe what the word of God said. But once we're in Christ, there's other steps we need to do. Work out your own salvation. Work out your own deliverance. That's why when you go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10, it says, If, up to me, 
if we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our heart that God has raised him, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's where you see the word saved. For out of the heart, man believeth. In other words, man continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Then you go to uh, Mark 6, uh, Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then you go to Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, he that continue to believe and is baptized. There's two baptism of water. John baptized with water. That's what man does. But it's Yahshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, that baptized with the Rosh Hakosh, which is the Holy Ghost. So that's why it says, if we believe and is baptized, you shall be saved. But if you believe it not, you shall be damned. First John 1 and 9, we confess our sins. He faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses and forsakes his sins shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sin, hallelujah, will not prosper. So if you have not confessed, you're sure. Repeat after me. It's a hard thing. Your words and your heart must agree. Other words, it does not work. I confess with my mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus, Yeshua, from the dead. And out of my heart, I am to continue to believe unto righteousness. So when I sin, the Bible says, there's none that sin is not, but those that have the seed in them, they do not practice sin because his seed remains in them. So when Yahshua is in me, then he let me know when I'm out of the will of his father. And the only thing I need to do is agree with him that sin is sin and repent. Because the Bible says we sin willfully after we have the knowledge. We bring ourselves back under bondage. And there is no more sacrifice for sin. That means after we have the knowledge and we continue to practice sin, we like a dog returning back to his vomit and we are bringing ourselves back under condemnation, which is the curse instead of the blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If anyone have any questions, you can put them there on Facebook. If I don't see them, I'll go back and answer as I do uh, later. And also, if you have a prayer request, I'll be happy to lift that before the Lord. If the Lord's will and you're free, join us tomorrow night at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central Time. And we will continue with the study out of Deuteronomy chapter number 30. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. I bless you in the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. Father, I come once again in the name of your dear son. And God, I thank you for your words. I thank you, oh God, hallelujah, that you sent the word to bless us. You didn't send the word to curse us. You sent your word that we will not be cursed, but we will be blessed. But you give us freedom of choice as you gave your son freedom of choice. He didn't have to give his life, but he gave it freely. No man had the power to take it. The same way you give us life freely. And you give us that same choice that no man can take our lives, but we can give it away. No man can take our peace and joy, but we can give it away because you give us freedom of choice, that same freedom you gave unto Yeshua the Messiah. God, we thank you for your freedom. But your word also say, but do not use our freedom as an excuse to sin. God, let us use every excuse, every reason to do that which is right and pleasing in your sight because we know what Satan came to do, rob, kill, and to destroy. But Yeshua said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God, give us that abundance life. Give us that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Give us that hunger and thirst, O oh God, for your word, that we will seek out your word daily and we will study and we will walk out your truth. God, I bless your people and I bless you. I love you and I bless your dear son. 
And I love him because your word says, He that honoreth the Father should honor the Son. He that dishonoreth the Son is dishonoring the Father. So God, I give you both honor according to John chapter 5. In the name of Yeshua, I bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all once again. Have a blessed day. If the word of God was a blessing to you, please feel free to share. Hallelujah.